In this video I'm going to show you how to run a latent profile analysis, LPA, with R. Before we go into the R code, I want to give you briefly some information about the background. With latent profile analysis, we try to find latent that is non-observed groups, in our cases, based on continuous variables. So we have some variables and we want to group our cases based on those variables. Latent profile analysis is closely related with latent class analysis. In latent class analysis, we would group our cases based on categorical variables. But the literature isn't consistent with this. So you can find articles where the two terms, latent profile analysis and latent class analysis, are used differently. So how could this look? This is a result of a latent profile analysis based on school data in the US. We have three variables, broad interest, enjoyment, and self-efficacy. And we want to extract latent profiles or classes or groups based on those variables. Here we have a three variable solution. We have one class with high values for interest and enjoyment and low values for self-efficacy. One class with medium values for the three variables and one class with low values in interest and enjoyment but high values in self-efficacy. But how does this work? I try to visualize this for a very simple case of just one continuous variable. Let's say this is the distribution of one variable. And now we want to extract latent classes. And with latent profile analysis, we try to model this distribution as a combination or mixture of different normally distributed classes. So this would be a possible result for a three class solution. One thing that I think is clear compared, for instance, to cluster analysis, latent profile analysis, is probabilistic. So each case is not assigned just to one class or profile, but each case is given probabilities for assignment to different profiles. So let's say a case here would have the highest probability for class 1, but would have a probability for class 2 as well. The probability for classes 3 would be nearly zero. There are three basic steps in the latent profile analysis. Model specification, how many classes. In most cases we don't know how many classes in advance, so we try out different numbers of classes. Model estimation, and then evaluation. Since we, in most cases, try out different number of classes, then we have to decide, okay, which number of classes is the best number. Latent profile analysis is to some extent exploratory, and we need some criteria how to decide how many classes we should use for our data. For that we could look at fit indices, at measures of classification accuracy, the classes should be of theoretical relevance, parsimony is important, we don't want many additional classes that don't really differ that much from each other, we're looking at stability and replicability, so we want to get more or less the same classes if we replicate the analysis with a different sample. And we could look at the relationship to other variables. Here it's important to distinguish between two kinds of class differences. Here we would have two quantitatively different classes. Both have high values for the first two variables and lower values for the third variable, so we only have a level difference. Here, however, we have qualitatively different classes. High, high, low for the blue class and low, low, high for the green class. And in most cases, qualitatively different classes or profiles are more interesting for us. One possible follow-up analysis would be looking at the relationship to other variables. We could look at predictor variables. How good can different theoretically relevant predictor variables predict our class membership? Let's say we have a four-class solution, but we are not so sure whether class two and three really differ, because there we don't have qualitatively different profiles, but just level differences. So we could check whether we can predict the differences. In our early, earlier example with the school data, can we predict differences in class assignment based on, for instance, IQ or social economic status of the parents or the teacher experience? For that we would use multinomial regression. And we could check whether we are able to predict different outcome variables with our classes, with ANOVAs, for instance, grade point average or life satisfaction. So let's start with R. You can find the complete R code on a companion webpage to this tutorial. The link is in the description. For the latent profile analysis, we use tidy LPA and for data wrangling, DeepLayer. P 
PISA USA 15 is the data frame we use. It's built in Entidy LPA, so you can try it out yourself. Here I only extract complete cases. There are options to deal with missing values, we'll come to that later. But to make it easier to start, let's just look at complete cases. We have broad interest, enjoyment, instrumental motivation and self-efficacy. And let's say we want to run a latent profile analysis for those three variables. And the example I showed you earlier was based on this data set. So let's start with a basic estimation. It's a very large data set. So here I only use the first 500 cases because otherwise it would take too long for this video. We select the three variables we want to use for latent profile analysis and then we use estimate pro profiles and here is the number of profiles. And I'd like to try out from one to six profiles. Here are the results. Model number, we come to that later. Here are the six different possible number of classes. The two main fit indices, AIC and BIC, they should be low. Entropy, prop min and prop max are measures about how good the assignment to the classes is. The, those measures should be high. And min and n max show the relative size of the smallest and of the largest class. So for instance, with three classes, the smallest profile would hold 17% of the sample and the largest profile 65% of the sample. And this is a bootstrap likelihood ratio test that compares one solution with a solution in the line before. And if it's significant, then the next solution is significantly better. Now we could look at all those numbers, but the program can help us with a function compare solutions. Now for AIC, six classes are the best. For BIC, six classes are the best. And if you take all kinds of fit indices together, six classes would be the best. So just based on the fit indices, we should use six classes. But please remember, that's not everything. We should look at things like how meaningful are the classes and so on. However, in this case, there's a warning message because six classes, the best solution here, is at the same time the highest number of classes we looked at. So maybe seven classes would be even better. So now we have to repeat it with a higher number of classes. The estimation takes some time. I, I usually cut the video to the point in time where it's completed. In most cases, it's a couple of seconds. And here, if I include class numbers seven and eight, nevertheless, six classes is the best. So based only on the fit indices, I would prefer six classes for my data. We can get additional fit indices with a get fit function, but I mostly look at AIC and BIC. So for me, the function above is enough. Now let's look at the different results. For that, we use the plot profiles function. We had looked earlier at the three class solution because that was the example I gave you in the beginning of the video. Now, if we go from there to the next possible solutions with four, five, and six classes, we see that mostly the middle class or the middle profile is split up in additional, in, into additional profiles. So we always have one class with high values in interest and enjoyment and the lowest values in self efficacy, one class with low values in interest and enjoyment and high values in self-efficacy. But in the middle, we get additional classes. And with the exception of enjoyment, we have a very large amount of overlap. So looking at this, I'm not sure whether more than three classes really make sense with this data. But we could try that out later on. We could try to predict the class membership with other variables we don't have in this example data set, or we could try to predict outcome variables based on those classes. And maybe six classes lead to outcome differences. Then maybe those six classes do make sense. But I'm more optimistic for three or for four classes than for six classes here. And of course, we could look at a single profile by using the double square brackets. There are additional possible plots, a density plot, and a bivariate plot. Here again are density plots, and here are bivariate plots between two variables, here between enjoyment and broad interest. You could look at the numbers for the different profiles. In this example, the three class solution. Here are the numbers for class number one, the means and the variances for all three variables. 
and the same for class number 2 and class number 3. And we could extract the da data by cases, for instance for analyzing the relationship to other variables. For that we use the getData function, in this example with four classes. Here you see the ID number is there four times because we have four different possible classes and we get the probability for each of those classes. So the case number one is assigned with a probability of nearly one to class one and with nearly zero to the other classes. Therefore it is assigned to class number one. But it can get more fuzzy. For instance, let's look at the case number six. Here we have a probability of 47% for class three and 53% for class four. So over, overall, this case is assigned to class number four. If you want to use this for further analysis, we normally want only one line per case. We can get this with this code. Now we have the case ID, a factor variable with the class. This case is assigned with the highest probability and our three variables. And if we, now we have other variables for those cases. We could try to look at the relationship between these classes and other variables. And as I mentioned earlier, stability and replicability of the solution is important. So we could run this analysis with a different sample. In this example, just with different cases from this very large data set. Now we get a warning if we have six classes, because there was probably some estimation problem, and that was the solution that was best in the other sample. And here, seven or eight classes are best. So the six class solution doesn't really replicate that well. So I would take this as further indication that maybe going with a smaller number of classes would be better here. There are possible additional parameters you could use. You could standardize your variables with a scale command. And you should do this if the variables are on a different scale. And you could use imputation for missing data with a single imputation function. And the last point, you can use different assumptions in your latent profile analysis. The default assumption is that for the different profiles, the variances are equal and within a profile that you don't have a covariance or correlation between the variables you base your profiles on. That's model number one. Model two would be unequal variances. So now it's possible that the different profiles have different variances for the variables. Model three, equal variances, but now covariances that could be different from zero. So now we could within a class have a covariance between our three different predictor variables. And model six, unequal variances and unequal covariances. We are missing models four and five. For those you would have to use M plus. If you use only R, we only have the model numbers one, two, three, and six. With the higher model numbers, you often run into estimation problems because you need to estimate a couple of additional parameters and that can lead to problems with the estimation. So now let's look at, again at one to six classes. But in this case, we are trying out all four possible model specifications. There were 11 warnings, use warnings to see them. And here we see for a couple of model numbers, it was not possible to estimate the model. And models two and six are both models with unequal variances. Let's look at the result. Here we see that a couple of model numbers are missing. And if we compare solutions, still the best model is model one with six classes. So the model with equal variances and covariances set to zero. That's it for this introduction into latent profile analysis with R. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.